Welcome guys back to another video. Today uh, I have with me Michael and his very nice Pinarello F12. As you can see, today we are on the different days at night uh, because we ran out of time the last time we filmed the bike. Uh, Michael, uh, over to you man. Let us know. Tell us about your bike. This is the Pinarello F12. It's uh, black on black. Uh, frame wise, this is a size 54. I'm running a Dura Ace Di2. And of course, I did some small changes here and there. I changed the wheels, I changed the BB and I changed the OSPW as well to uh, ceramic speed. I'm 183, this is a size 54. Uh, my saddle is actually uh, the S-Works power mirror saddle and I felt, I feel that among this whole bike right, the saddle is the best investment. It's the one that really enables you to ride smoother without any uh, saddle sores. Uh. Yeah. About 780, I think. This is a Princeton 6560. So I got this from uh, One by Asia. I think this is very unique in the sense that um, the model number is 6560. So if you look over here, there's this uh, sinusoidal waves over here. So the peak of it is 65 and then this is 60 mm thereby having the, giving it the model number 6560. My hubs are white industry hubs. I think uh, somewhere below $4,000 for this wheel set. Yeah, about 3.8, I think. Yeah, I mean, this one have to ask one by Asia. Uh, maybe they give discount or I'm, I'm not really sure. Yeah. Initially, when I first started riding, um, I was on a hybrid. Then I realized that uh, it was pretty heavy. I couldn't catch my friends and slowly, slowly kind of poisoned by my friends. Then I switched to uh, Polygon and Canyon. Then my first... Uh, the, the, the first time I actually went into a Pinarello was a F8. It was a rim brake. So as you can see, this is a disc brake. Uh, the reason why I got a F12 is because one of my good friends told me to uh, not to to Ye Wang Lu. La. And uh, you know, instead of upgrading bit by bit and part by part, just get something that is, uh, you know, where you don't need to upgrade anymore. And uh, yeah, la, so I, I, I'm quite comfortable with this. But I'm changing this bike soon, so I'll, I'll still take this, even though this weighs slightly heavier than compared to my F8. My F8 was uh, somewhere around 6.7, 6.8. Uh, this new, this F12 is somewhere in the range of 7.7, 7.8, 7 yeah. Yeah, which is quite light actually. For a disc brake, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, the, the new one is lighter. La. My, my new bike hopefully is lighter than this. Uh. I am upgrading to the Dogma F, <laughs> yeah, okay. which is a lighter this break uh, yeah okay. hopefully we can get that bike on my channel uh. yeah I, I, I would love to share it with you guys yeah, okay. yeah. so in the climbs for for flats definitely no no really it's uh, one of the the response the traction you get every step the power transmission to the ground is uh, absolutely seamless and when you can really feel that when you push your your pedal down right your the surge in acceleration you get right is, is something that you really can feel. Uh, but on climbs, of course, not on this wheel set. I did this. I did a climb in uh, Thailand on this wheel set. Uh, it was something that I would not have done on this wheel set. Uh. Yeah, it's not the best wheel set to go climbing with la. But it still served its purpose. Um, I managed to achieve my. It was a seventeen percent gradient climb, uh, so I only had one goal uh, which was not to touch the foot. Uh. It, it didn't matter. Speed didn't matter la. I was just I was zigzagging until. I literally couldn't, I was just drawing lines. La. I, I'll, I'll show you a photo of the yeah. climb. I'm running a Continental GP5000, but this color is uh, originally, is actually a tan wall color. Not this brown, it's slightly yellowish. Uh, it's, it's gum wall, not, not tan wall. But as you can see over, over time, it has uh, faded to tan wall. So the original gum wall for this GP5000 was the, it's a Tour de France edition uh, for, for last year. But I understand that now Continental has made this uh, into one of their regular colors. La. This is originally uh, black on black. I so uh, I actually wanted to do uh, a bike that with the along the theme of uh, black gold because I felt that black gold is something that won't go wrong. La. It's quite classic. So that's why my tape, my stickers and all, I try to achieve the black gold, even down to the gold chain as well. How, yeah. do you, how do you get the decals? The decals were done by uh, Yusuf from uh, Cycleworks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. He's, you can look for him for stickers. Okay. Yeah. okay, so now we'll move on to the Instagram segment of the video. Um, you guys want to ask your questions, follow me on Instagram. And usually before I film the bike, I will uh, post an Insta, sto uh, Insta story and you guys can ask your questions. First question is from I'm Slow Shit. His question is, uh, what's the total build 
and uh, what's the price of the build? Wow, so originally the total build for the F12, uh, it came with a stock rim, uh, scope rims actually. So that that was about 18,000 plus. So if you add in the the cost of the BB and the OSPW, so you see the ceramic speed BB actually makes it slightly smoother. La. So there's a bit of a marginal gain. La. 騙自己, la. 騙自己. You feel good, then you tend to ride better. 22,000 thereabouts. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are you planning to sell this bike? Yes. Uh, yes, I will be selling this bike. I, 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 in fact, I'm, I'm actually, there's the, I, I've already posted on Carousel. Next question is from Lillian C. Is it worth the money? I think to a certain extent, I would say yes. I think it's worth the money because whenever friends talk about upgrading, changing bike, uh, changing this part, changing this, you know, Altegra to Dura Ace, whether or not to use DI2, change this saddle, change this, change that. I find that I got nothing to change really because I, I'm very, very happy with whatever I have. And so to answer the question, uh, is it worth the money? I feel that yes, because when I ride, I'm not a very strong rider. So when I ride with my stronger friends, right, I need to play cheat a little bit by reducing the weight on, on, on the bike. Lah. Uh, so far after changing to this bike, I am still not the fastest, but I don't get dropped so easily. I can still see them at the back of the line. Yeah. So I guess, uh, yeah, I think it's worth the money. And you're paying for a piece of, uh, a very, very, very unique piece of uh, Italian bike. Next question is from BG Nelson. His question is, rumors has it that Dogma F12 is uncomfortable due to the aero geometry is it true i certainly hope not but i mean in line with uh, pinarello's dogmas evolve uh, evolution over the years right so from the f8 to f10 to the f12 hopefully this one is definitely better in terms of not just the weight but in terms of the aerodynamics but i understand that a lot of people also said that uh, this dogma f did not win the any any stages in the tour de france la. so i mean Hopefully with evolution, this is, uh, I hope that the bike gets better. Lah. I mean, naturally, if it's lighter, I hope that it's lighter. Okay, uh, next question from Sia Chai 95 Why are you selling this bike? Is it too fast for your slow legs? Whoa. Wow, very sensitive, this one. Uh, no, no, no. I'm, I actually enjoyed this right, but I want to see whether the Dogma F is something, like you said, uh, slow legs means that you have to get a lighter frame. So I, I'm hoping that with a lighter frame, uh, I'm actually able to improve my speed lah, and my, my, my endurance for this. But of course, uh, this is 7.8. If the new bike is 6.8, then I'm not complaining like, if there's a reduction in weight. Okay, next question is from what the Loy saw. How do the wheels ride? Any recommended tire width for aero optimization? These wheels ride very, very well in terms of stability and uh, traction on the ground, like I said earlier. So going downhill, I think uh, I did a max speed downhill of about 80 odd km before. And I had, I wasn't afraid that something would happen, the tire would burst or... In fact, these wheels were very, very stable. I could feel the stability as compared to uh, um, other, other, the, the previous bikes that I rode before. But of course, I didn't take the previous bike to go down a very steep slope. Um, these wheels are actually 25mm. And the reason why I chose the GP5000 was because even going uh, gravel, slightly gravel, a bit off-road, off um, these wheels never gave me problems before as compared to uh, other brands that I've used. So far, maybe I'm lucky with these wheels. Lah, so I tend to just use this and, you know, I don't, don't want to reinvent the wheel. Lah. Since I had no problem with this, I don't really want to try new tires because that might potentially give me problems. On the topic of uh, wheel set, Alex Ng96 asks, how does the wheel set respond to crosswind? You will feel the crosswinds. That, that is definitely for sure. Um, but in terms of, uh, so far, heavy crosswinds, I rode, um, if you're talking about Changi Coastal, I don't think we have that kind of uh, very strong winds that would really push you off the bike. But you will feel a bit of feedback on the wheels. So I think uh, if there is, if you're riding in open spaces, you should take caution to always ride with two hands uh, or at least keep one, one hand firm on, firmly on the handlebar. Because you, you, you will be able to feel the feedback, but it's not going to be strong enough to push you off. Last question from Ducky12Mini. 
what mileage is on the bike and it's, he says it's a sick bike. Thank you, thank you for for for, for liking this bike as well. Um, mileage wise, I think, let me see, I think about a thousand, no, no, maybe about less than 10,000 km, I, I, I would say. Anyway, uh, I hope that, I think it depends ultimately on what you ride and what you're comfortable with. Uh, for me, some of my friends prefer uh, S-Works, you know, SL7, SL6. No, at the end of the day, it's just what, whatever you have at, that, that you're happy with. Because I don't think there's one bike that will magically get you the fastest or at the top of the line. At the end of the day, I think it's still the training and the endurance. Lah. And ultimately, you must find something that you are really happy with and... It's natural that if you're happy with your bike, you would, you'll be more willing to go and ride. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where everything happens, uh, where you lose weight, you, you, you ride with your friends, you enjoy, you have fun, you burn your calories and all. Yeah. So it depends on ultimately what kind of rider you are. I'm, I'm, I'm not a pro. Uh, I'm just doing this because I felt that in riding, I've made a lot of new friends. And uh, I've managed to lose a lot of weight as well. So How to me, I think I've lost about 7 to 8 kg. Uh. And I, I didn't realize this because it was friends that actually told me, hey, you sold it, sold it. So, so it was something that, that happened as a byproduct. Previously, when I did activities to lose weight, uh, they don't tend to turn out well uh, because I'll get lazy, I don't commit to it. So because cycling is fun and I enjoyed the process, the losing weight was a byproduct of the process and I think that's what made me enjoy it a lot. Yeah, so with that, I hope that everybody rides safe. Lah. Okay, that's the end of the video for today, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, do co consider subscribing and uh, giving a like and mention in the comments uh, what you think of Michael's F12. Uh, this bike's on sale, so I'll probably put a description or uh, the link to his Carousel account. Uh, follow me on Instagram to see behind the scenes photos and also um, pictures of bikes before I release them on uh, YouTube. Uh, Michael, thank you so much again for coming, man. Uh, I'll hope to see your Dogma F. Thank you very much for having me, and I hope that everybody rides safe.